My school teacher Thompson was so strict. It was a bright morning in New York City, but I wasn't feeling cheerful at all. You see, my school teacher, Mr. Thompson, was known for being the strictest teacher in the whole city. He had sharp eyes like a hawk, always catching every mistake we made in class. I, Robert, and my stepmom, Victoria, were walking to school when I told her, Stepmom, I really don't want to go to school today. Victoria smiled and said, Robert, I know Mr. Thompson is strict, but that's just because he cares. You'll do just fine. She was always so calm, but I wasn't convinced. Stepmom, you don't know how scary he is. He gave me extra homework yesterday just because I yawned. Victoria laughed softly. Maybe today will be different, who knows? I wasn't sure about that. As we reached the school gate, I said goodbye to her and walked in, feeling like I was walking into a lion's den. When I got to the classroom, there he was, Mr. Thompson, standing tall with his arms crossed. His eyes narrowed as soon as he saw me. Robert, don't think I've forgotten about your homework, he said. I gulped. How could I forget? I handed him my notebook, hoping he wouldn't find anything wrong. Hmm, he muttered as he flipped through the pages. I could feel my heart pounding like a drum. Then, to my surprise, he nodded. Good work, Robert, he said, giving me a quick nod. That's it? No extra homework? No yelling? I sat down, relieved. But that relief didn't last long. Later that afternoon, after school, Victoria and I had a new task to do. We had volunteered to help clean and mop the streets of New York City as part of a neighborhood project. It was going to be a long day, but it was important to keep our city clean. Robert, get the mop from the car, Victoria said as we stood near the busy street. I rushed to get the mop, but when I came back, something strange happened. The sky, which was bright just minutes ago, had suddenly turned dark. A cold breeze swept through the street, and a quietness fell over the city. I looked around. Everyone had disappeared from the street. It was like the whole city had gone silent in an instant. I looked at Victoria, who was now staring at the sky. What's happening? I asked, my voice shaky. Victoria shrugged, but I could see she was just as confused as I was. I don't know, Robert, but we better finish this quickly. We started mopping, the eerie silence making everything feel even stranger. As we moved down the street cleaning each corner, I felt like someone was watching us. I turned around suddenly but saw nothing. Do you feel that too? I asked Victoria. She nodded. Yes. Something's not right. Her calm voice was still there, but I could tell she was nervous now. Suddenly we heard footsteps, heavy footsteps, coming from the alleyway beside us. I froze. Who could it be? Victoria gripped my hand. Stay close to me, she whispered. Then, out of the shadows, we saw a tall figure step forward. It was Mr. Thompson. But what was he doing here? And why did he look so different? His usual stern expression was gone, replaced by something unsettling. Mr. Thompson? I stammered, not sure if I should be relieved or even more scared. He didn't answer right away. Instead, he stared at us for a long moment, his face dark under the strange sky. What are you two doing here? He finally asked, his voice deep and serious. We're cleaning the street, Victoria replied, trying to keep her voice steady. What about you? I live nearby, he said, his eyes still fixed on me. But you should leave now. 
This place isn't safe. Not safe? What was he talking about? Before I could ask, a loud noise echoed through the street, like something had fallen from the sky. We all jumped. What was that? I shouted. Mr. Thompson grabbed my arm, pulling me away. You need to go, now! Victoria quickly grabbed the mop and our cleaning supplies. We ran down the street, but the strange noise followed us, growing louder with every step. I had no idea what was happening, but I knew one thing. This wasn't normal. Just as we were about to reach the end of the street, the sky suddenly cleared. The noise stopped. The city returned to normal. People appeared on the street again, walking and talking like nothing had happened. I stopped and looked around. Was it all a dream? Victoria was breathing heavily still gripping my arm. What just happened? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Mr. Thompson, who had been running behind us, stopped too, his face calmer now. That, Robert, is a mystery of the city. Sometimes strange things happen here, and it's better not to question them. I stared at him. You knew this would happen? He smiled slightly. I've lived here long enough to know that New York City is full of surprises. Then, with a nod, he turned and walked away, as if nothing unusual had happened at all. I looked up at Victoria, who was still trying to catch her breath. What do we do now? She smiled, patting my shoulder. I think we've cleaned enough for today. Later that night, as I lay in bed, I couldn't stop thinking about the day. The strange noise, the sky turning dark, Mr. Thompson's mysterious appearance. It all seemed like a bad dream. But then, I realized something. Maybe Mr. Thompson wasn't as scary as I thought. Maybe he was just... different. Strict, yes but there was something more to him, something mysterious. The next day at school, when I walked into the classroom, I didn't feel as scared as before. Mr. Thompson gave me his usual stern look, but this time I smiled back. Maybe the city had taught me something important, that not everything is as it seems, and sometimes the people you think are scary can surprise you. As I sat down, ready for another day of school, I couldn't help but wonder. What other mysteries did New York City hold? And would I ever understand them? Don't judge someone too quickly. Sometimes the people who seem the toughest have hidden depths. And life, much like New York City, is full of surprises. As I sat in my seat, my mind raced with thoughts of yesterday's events. Had I really just run from a strange noise and a mysterious version of Mr. Thompson? My classmates chatted around me, oblivious to the strange twist my day had taken. I decided that I would find out more about Mr. Thompson. The bell rang, signaling the start of class, and Mr. Thompson walked in. This time, instead of feeling afraid, I felt curious. Good morning, class, he announced, his voice booming. Today we have a surprise lesson. You'll need your imaginations. My heart skipped a beat. A surprise lesson? What could that mean? He began to write on the board. Imagination and mystery. He turned to us with a sly grin. Today, we'll explore how to create suspenseful stories. I want each of you to think of a mystery you've experienced or heard about. You'll write a short story about it. Excitement bubbled inside me. This was my chance to learn more about storytelling and maybe even about Mr. Thompson. I raised my hand. Mr. Thompson... Can we include real experiences?
Like what happened on the street yesterday. He paused, a glimmer of interest in his eyes. Of course, Robert. Real-life mysteries are often the most intriguing. Just remember, the key to suspense is to keep your readers on the edge of their seats. As we began writing, I couldn't help but think about my experience. I scribbled down everything I could remember about the dark sky, the heavy footsteps, and Mr. Thompson's sudden appearance. The more I wrote, the more the story unfolded in my mind. I imagined Mr. Thompson as a hero, guiding us through the strange event. After class, I approached Mr. Thompson. Can I show you my story? I asked, holding my notebook tightly. Of course, Robert. I'd love to read it, he replied, his usual stern demeanor softening. I handed him my notebook, and as he read, I felt a mix of excitement and nervousness. He read quietly, his brow furrowing slightly as he reached the end. This is impressive, Robert, he said finally, a smile breaking across his face. You have a knack for storytelling, I beamed with pride. Thank you. I was inspired by what happened yesterday. Life is full of mysteries, and stories help us understand them, Mr. Thompson said. You've captured that well. Keep writing and who knows. Maybe one day you'll be a great author. His words lifted my spirits. Maybe he wasn't so strict after all. He was just passionate about learning. I thanked him and rushed back to my seat, eager to share my excitement with Victoria later. After school, Victoria was waiting for me, and I couldn't wait to tell her everything. Stepmom, you won't believe what happened today. Mr. Thompson is letting us write about our own mysteries, I exclaimed. Victoria smiled, proud of my enthusiasm. That sounds amazing, Robert. I always knew you had a talent for storytelling. That night, as we sat together, I shared my story with her. And then... I imagined Mr. Thompson as a hero leading us through the mystery, I said, my eyes shining. That's a great twist, and it shows how you can find the positive side of people, even when they seem strict or scary, Victoria encouraged. I nodded, feeling inspired. Yeah, I think I'll keep writing about our city and all its mysteries. As I wrote more stories, I realized I was discovering the magic of words. I began to see my classmates and teachers in a new light, understanding that everyone had their own stories and experiences that shaped them. Even Mr. Thompson had a past that made him who he was. Days turned into weeks, and my stories became a regular part of class. Mr. Thompson encouraged all of us to share our tales, turning our classroom into a place of creativity and laughter. I found myself looking forward to school, no longer afraid of Mr. Thompson's stern face, but instead eager to learn from him. Then came the day of the school talent show. Mr. Thompson announced that we would all perform a short reading of our best stories. My heart raced with excitement and nerves. What if people don't like my story, I thought. That evening, as I prepared to go on stage, Victoria squeezed my hand. Just be yourself, Robert. Your words are special. When it was my turn, I stepped up to the microphone, looking out at the audience of parents and classmates. I took a deep breath and began to read my story about the mysterious day with Mr. Thompson and the strange happenings in the city. The room was silent, captivated by my words. I shared my thoughts on finding joy and understanding in the unexpected. When I finished, the audience erupted in applause. I felt a rush of happiness and relief. I spotted Mr. Thompson in the front row, and he gave me a thumbs up, 
his face glowing with pride. Well done, Robert, he shouted. After the show, many classmates came up to me, asking about my story and sharing their own experiences. I realized that what started as a scary experience had turned into something beautiful, a way to connect with others through storytelling. A few days later, Mr. Thompson pulled me aside after class. Robert, he said, I've noticed your growth as a storyteller. I'd like to invite you to join a creative writing club I'm starting. We'll explore more mysteries and help each other improve our skills. I couldn't believe it. Really, Mr. Thompson? That sounds amazing. He nodded, a proud smile on his face. You've shown great potential, and I want to help you develop it further. With a mix of excitement and gratitude, I accepted the invitation. This was a whole new adventure, and I was ready to dive in. As the months passed, I became more confident in my writing. I learned that life was full of mysteries worth exploring, and that even the most serious people could reveal their kindness and creativity when given the chance. In the end, I understood that Mr. Thompson, who once seemed so strict, was a wonderful teacher who believed in the power of stories. The experience not only changed my view of him, but also helped me see the magic of storytelling in everyday life. And so, I continued to write, sharing my adventures and mysteries with my friends, family, and the world. With each story, I hope to inspire others to find joy in the unexpected and to see the beauty in every person's journey. Moral of the Story Don't judge others too quickly. Everyone has their own stories and experiences. Embrace the unexpected, and you might find that the most mysterious people can be the most inspiring. Stories have the power to connect us and help us understand each other better.